This is a quick movie of how to do uh, a time lapse and also Z stacking inside the multi-dimensional acquire window in Metamorph. Um, first thing to always do when we're doing our imaging is to make sure that the wavelength is set up correctly. So we're just going to do one wavelength at the moment. So I'm going to see 20, and I'm just going to take a quick picture and say, "Yep, that's correct." So I've got one image live. I'll just get rid of that. So my exposure time is fine. I'll not save that image. And then I will go back to my main tab and I'm going to time on the time lapse. Now, when I turn on time lapse, I get my new time lapse tab. And here I can say how many time points I want, how long I want it to run for, and how many time intervals. So in this case, I'm actually going to do a time lapse every three seconds, uh, which means it's going to take six seconds if I take three time points. But if I say, actually, I want to do it for, uh, f for ten seconds, okay? It quickly calculates if I want to do it for 10, I have to do four time points. So all of these three interconnect, and we can control seconds or microseconds here. It tell you here an estimated number in in seconds. So for example, at the moment we have a 20 millisecond exposure, which is 0.02 seconds. What it will do, if you ask for it to do, say, this every milliseconds, it'll come up and give you an error, and it'll give you a big yellow blob, and it says you can't do this. And what that's calculating is it says we can't fit your 20 millisecond exposure times into this time point. We can't do it in that many seconds. Now, you have to bear in mind that's good, but it does not take into account any filter world movements, any stage movements, any Z movements. So it is only a useful tool if you were doing time lapse alone. If you need to calculate how long an acquisition run takes, you should really do that acquisition run and work it out. Okay, so I'm going to go back to seconds, and we can just try that. Now, we introduce a new element here, which is called the preview window. So before I actually go and do the acquire, we know the exposure time is correct, I'm going to press preview. And what preview does is it takes an image of my position that I'm at currently, and it says, okay, you've got three second intervals here. Do you want to go live and make an adjustment? So I can go back live, and I can say, okay, we'll move it, move it slightly to the right. Okay, and F2 stops. And I can just say, actually, now I want to do it every four seconds. So I can make changes at this point. So now I can just say, let's take that down to two. And just say start. And you can just see it snapping away, taking new images as it goes along. Now, all of those images are now saved into the hard disk of the computer. And we can use another tool later on called multidimensional review to go and have a look at that time sequence. But now we're here. Let's turn off time lapse. And let's look at doing a Z sequence, a Z stack. So we know if I just press my stat, snap button at the bottom, I'm still in focus and I'm in the center of position. So if I go to Z se series, I now get my Z series tab. This tells me my current position and how many microns I'm going to move when I press the up and down buttons here. Um, and I can operate this in a couple of different ways. I can do range around current. So currently, this is setting my position where I am by default and saying I want to travel 20 microns. That's 10 microns up and 10 microns down. Or actually, this is actually 20 microns up and 20 microns down. And it tells you my step size is 5 microns, and it wants to take 5 steps. So normally, we would, we would sort of uh, slice it around, around the wavelength of light. People trying to be completely accurate for deconvolution, about 0.2 is a normal number. So that will calculate that I need to do 101 steps to do my 20 microns. So let's just do 0.5, so I'm being a little bit accurate, inaccurate. That's got 41. So just for making life easier, let's just make one. Okay. So that would be range around current. So I'm now going to travel 21 microns to get my 20 micron step around that. I can, of course, untick this and actually use the controllers either here or on my, uh, actually here, sorry, or on my, uh, uh, on my uh, controller unit to actually go up and down. And I can actually say this is the top and this is the bottom, this is where I want to take my stack. However, in a live cell time lapse experiment, you'd actually probably stick to using range around current uh, because that's more accurate, particularly if you're doing multiple positions. It's a lot easier to work with. So I'm just going to do that. And again, we can do uh, preview. Preview is a pretty good way. It can say uh, use Z current as center when resumed. So if we want to go back and do another one, we'll use this as our current Z. We can go back to live, we can make adjustments, or we can just press start. And what you can see during the acquisition is it'll actually play through the sequence here. Now, my sample is incredibly thin, and I'm using a low 10 times objective. 
So this is going to be uh, a pretty simple, pretty quick, pretty fat movie. Okay, and in this case it's quite nice that it leaves you right in the centre of the focal plane. So now I can play backwards and forwards through my movie, but it leaves me always in what should be in focus. So when I'm doing a time series of Z stacks, which I can do by pressing time series, and we'll just come here, and we could say do this every 10 seconds. When I when I go and do this, which I'm just going to do now, it actually does the acquisition and leaves me in the middle, in the middle so I know that I'm in focus for my next acquisition. Okay, so you can see it's going to do that. And what it should do is return me to the center, and it's gone straight into the next acquisition. If I don't go into the next acquisition, what I will do is get a countdown to my next acquisition time, which is quite nice. So I've got quite a few time points here. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Escape, and I'm going to say I don't want to go all the way through with this experiment. And that means that only the partial files are written and recorded. If I wanted to do that with multiple channels, I would just click multiple channels and again set up my wavelengths correctly. So channel 1 fits C, channel 2 will have text is red and we'll make it darker. And then uh, we'll turn off time lapse for the moment just because we're just going to want to do multi wavelength and Z series.